I'm David Lyle, welcome to the Popular Woodworking Shop. I am going to be building the ultimate lathe stand. Now this is an article that was first put out by Alan Lacer uh, in American Woodworker. It's a great build and I personally need a lathe stand. So I'm adapting his plans for my lathe, which is an old craftsman. Uh, the issue is, is that my lathe is 46 inches long and the lathe that this stand was developed for was only 26 inches long. So I'm making a few adaptations for it, um, but the majority of the design is going to be exactly the same. Uh, a couple things that I wanna bring to your attention first. Uh, Alan calls for using Baltic birch plywood. Uh, I emailed Alan about this and he said, do not use construction grade plywood as you see here. Uh, because what you have is just five layers of wood and they have all kinds of interruptions and at times voids. Uh, this is actually a pretty nice piece, uh, but with Baltic birch, you get about 13 plies of birch plywood and it's the same wood all the way through and you're not gonna have the same amount of voids in it. So it's much more sturdy and most of the wood on this project is actually two plies glued together. And so you end up with an inch and a half thick beam uh, for your rails, for the top, and for the sides. Um, one other thing that I wanna show you before we get started is the unique joinery that Alan calls for in this. And I think this is the foundation for why it is so sturdy. He uses copper pipe inset into the rails on the lathe stand uh, with lag bolts all the way through that create a really strong joint. I'm gonna do one for you here. Now on this piece, I've already marked it out. You take your three quarter inch copper pipe and you put it one inch into the wood. And that way on your inch and a half thick sides, you'll come into the rail three inches. So you use a seven, seven eighths inch spade bit and you're gonna lock this down to your bench. I've already laid mine out here. I'll put my safety glasses. You'll want to get that dead center on there. And as you come with through with the spade bit, you need to be careful you don't blow out the back too bad. It'll want to tear out and you could put a backer piece down there. Um, I'm okay with not doing that on this test piece because I really just wanted to show this to you. And then what you have is a hole that will accept your three quarter inch copper. And I've already drilled the hole that's going to meet the bolt on the other side. And you just take it home. And then you pre-drill for the bolt. And I used a 5 16th bit to allow my quarter inch bolt to pass through. And so imagine that this is the side of your project and it's coming into the rail and you can see that the bolt comes into the copper pipe and exits on this side with the hex head, which is important. And then you can simply put your bolt on. I found that because this three quarter inch hole is so small that you can't really get a wrench in there. So I'm going to hold the nut with some needle nose pliers and get it started. And then from there, I can advance the screw from the outside. And when tight, this is going to be rock solid. You will not be able to knock this loose. And the thing with your lay stand that you need to keep in mind is that there's a lot of vibration going on. And so having this kind of joint is going to let you make an incredibly strong joint, far superior to a, a pocket hole or anything else for plywood. So those are the two foundations of the strength of this project. 
And so we're gonna get started with the build here. I've already laminated most of my birch plywood. And so we're just gonna show that to you sped up. And then we're gonna jump into making the legs on this project. All right, I've come over to my temporary bench so that I don't accidentally cut into my uh, nice joiner's bench over there. But I've gone ahead and printed off Alan's plans uh, in their entirety, and I'm gonna use his leg detail uh, exactly how it is, because in his plan, he calls for uh, a 33 and an eighth inch height on the leg, and then he adds the top height to that, um, and it works out good for me too. And he talks about this in the article about how he's five foot eight, his lathe is nine inches to center uh, from the bottom. And I can neither confirm nor deny that I'm also five nine. <laughs> so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna lay out this leg that I've already laminated together. Uh, it's going to be 33 and an eighth inch high. So I've already squared this edge with my circular saw. And so I can use that as my reference to come up up 33 and 1 8 inch. Now I've already drawn this line, but I reference off this edge and across. You could do this with a regular circular saw with a homemade track, uh, but I have this on hand, so I'm gonna use this Nikita for this. Alright, so this is going to be the main leg on the left or right side once I decide about that. Um, and now I need to mention the other half to 33 and an eighth. Okay, so we have our two legs dimensioned out to their overall dimensions. Now, these legs taper in a little bit, and so the bottom is at 18 and 7 eighths, and that's how I glued it up. The top is 13 inches wide, which is what Alan used. It works great for my lathe as well. It'll give me a nice surface, uh, even though my lathe is pretty narrow. Um, so I'm gonna use that same measurement. Uh, with these being just about 19 inches and the top being 13 inches, I'm gonna come in three inches on both sides. So I'm going to mark the diagonal with my framing square. So I'm gonna come straight from this corner over here to my mark here. And 
The same with the other side. All right, and so now we have our diagonals established. 18 and 7 eighths up to 13 inches. I'm gonna cut these out on the track saw uh, like you saw earlier, and so I'm gonna get to that. All right, so now I have my legs cut to their final dimensions. I'm gonna cut all of my rails at the same time uh, to their final length of 44 and a half inches to fit my lathe uh, as opposed to Alan's. So I'm gonna get these cut and then we'll head it back over to the bench. So we're gonna move on to the joinery here. Um, I've had to adapt this plan a little bit. So I'm going to put these copper pipes two and three quarter inches into the piece. Uh, in the original plans by Alan Lacer, he says two and a half inches. But remember, we're taking out the five degree angle on the side legs of this, of this project. So we're gonna put these at two and three quarter. Uh, and so I'm just gonna mark that. And then now we just need to find the center of that line. One quick way you can do that is you can put the corner of your ruler on the corner of your workpiece, then move to an easily identifiable place where you can divide in half. So I move mine to the four inch mark. And then at two, we have our halfway of that piece. And so now you can just take your combination square and take that line up, and this will be the exact mark that we need for our hole. I'm using a spade bit that is 7 eighths of an inch. This will give me a nice tight fit for my 3 quarter inch copper piping. Now I'm gonna drill this in one side, and the screw will lead it in, but once I feel that screw come out the other side of this part, I'm gonna flip the part over and drill in from the other side just so I get a nice clean hole. Clamp this down to my bench. All my safety glasses, and we're ready to go. Now I just have that exit hole from the screw. I'm gonna flip it over and we'll get a nice clean hole here. It's not quite as crisp as if you were using a Forstner bit, but for this project, I feel okay with that. There we go. Clean that up with some sandpaper and we will be good to go. Now, for the fitting, we're gonna drop that in, grab our mallet, and we are good to go. Seven more to go. So I have my rail in this vise now. It's tightened up so it's not going anywhere. Uh, and you can see that I have my center mark from where I found center to drill this hole. I'm gonna carry that up to the top and that way we can have center this way on our part and then we can just shoot to go between these plies to get center the other way. And this is a great place to have an engineer square. It makes quick work of this kind of layout. 
And now we can see between the plies, that's where I want to hit. Your regular drill bit should have no issue going through the copper, um, as long as it's not overly dull. Uh, but do make sure that you're clearing your chips out of this deep of a hole on a regular basis. And when you're drilling copper, you wanna make sure that you don't swipe the chips off with your hand. I got copper chips here and on the table. Uh, use a brush because you don't want that catching your finger in the wrong way and getting embedded in there. So I'm gonna lay out and drill all of these holes and then we're gonna make the pilot holes on the legs. All right, so this is one of the legs of the lathe stand. I'm gonna show you how I lay this out, but I would really encourage you just to reference the drawings that accompany this project to get the dimensions. Uh, one thing that we need to consider is that we are going to have a rail at the top, top, and directly down from the back leg, uh, that rail, and then on the front, we're gonna bring this rail in a little bit so that when you're at your lathe stand, you can put your foot a little far forward, almost underneath the, the lathe. So you give yourself a little uh, room there. So on the top, we're gonna to come in one and a quarter inches from the very corner on both sides. and down one and 11 sixteenths. I need to use my combination square for that. And then on this back rail, I'm going to line my drywall square up with this corner and come down to 20 inches, which is on the framing square like this, uh, same on both sides. And that will be my spot where I drill for that rail. Now for the front bottom rail, I'm going to come in four inches from the corner and down 20 inches. And that will be the position for the clearance holes to screw in my rails. I'm gonna drill these out with a 21 uh, inch drill bit and this will give me a little bit of clearance room for this quarter 20 bolt uh, so that I can position the rails more precisely uh, with the top. All right, so I'm using a quarter 20 bolt. Uh, I'm gonna put a washer on this side that comes through this way. And I have my quarter 20 nut. And the best way that I have found to get this nut to sit inside of here while you're screwing it in is to put it on a pair of needle nose pliers. So let's give this a go. Uh, just for convenience, I've put the leg piece in my vise just to hold it while I get this top one assembled. And once it starts to bite the copper, it will pretty much hold itself in. There we go. Be ready to wiggle and fiddle, because 
it is hard to get the nut to grab quite at first. But once it does, you're good to go. Okay, all right, now that we got the two top rails, we are gonna put in the bottom two just in the same way. Use my needle nose pliers to get this nut started. And we are going to have a lathe stand very soon. All right, so we are just about done with this project. I went ahead and cut my top to its final dimensions and it's just resting on the rails at this moment. Uh, but mine's about 49 inches. I also wanted to note that I cut my top and here you can see that the rail is inset from the front of the stand so that when you're using your lathe, you can really get your foot under there and feel comfortable while you're turning. To attach the top to this rail and to the base, we're gonna use lag bolts that come up here and into the top. Um, I made a couple other changes uh, to Alan Lacer's design in the ultimate lathe stand. In his original drawings, he had the sides brought in five degrees. I did not do that. Um, I wanted to simplify the design a little bit. Uh, my lathe is not huge. I'm not worried about it moving this stand too much. Um, but I feel that with the straight legs, you reduce the complexity of the project. And so your rails do not have five degrees. Your holes are not coming in at five degrees. The tops and bottoms of the legs are not at five degrees. So it saves you a little bit of time and a little bit of effort while you're cutting all your parts and preparing the sheet goods, which are not fun to move around in the first place. Um, and with that, I'm gonna get my top attached and the bottom attached, and I'm gonna put a couple coats of poly on this, and I'm gonna set this up. Last thing that I did change is I'm going to mount my motor to the bottom of the top. Um, in the original drawing, Alan actually puts a shelf down here with a hinged mount that you can put your motor on. Um, and I think my tools are gonna to go back here. I'm gonna have a rail that I can put my tools into or just drill holes directly into the top. So that's how I'm gonna proceed. Happy building and enjoy this project. 